Welcome to Healthy Births, Happy Babies, where we share tips, tools, and stories grounded in natural childbirth and parenting principles, so that instead of feeling overwhelmed and confused during this exciting time in your life, you feel safe, supported, and empowered in your childbirth and parenting journey. And now, here's your host, Dr. Jay Warren. Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Healthy Births, Happy Babies. I'm Dr. Jay Warren. I am the Family Wellness Chiropractor and Wellness Care Coordinator at the Cap Wellness Center. And today we have Dr. Cap and Care back with us to have a very interesting discussion about a topic that is very important to a lot of women out there, and that is VBAC, or vaginal birth after cesarean. But before we get into that discussion, I want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, the Cap Wellness Center, who makes this podcast possible. The CAP Wellness Center in Encinitas, California has assembled an incredible team of fully certified holistic healthcare professionals that offer the very best in prenatal and postpartum wellness services. We offer acupuncture, chiropractic, massage, yoga, lactation support services, and a wide variety of birth education classes to ensure that you are fully able to experience the power of birth. And now I'd like to introduce our guests, Dr. Kapitanakis and Care Messer. Dr. Kapitanakis is board certified by the American Board of Obstetrics and Gynecology. He received his medical degree from Western University of Health Sciences College of Osteopathic Medicine of the Pacific. So along with all of the requirements of an MD, Dr. Kapitanakis has trained in the art of osteopathic manipulative medicine. He serves as the Vice Chair of the Obstetrical and Gynecological Department at Scripps Memorial Hospital Encinitas and is a member of the American Congress of Obstetrics and Gynecology. When not working, Dr. Cap enjoys spending time outdoors with his wife and their three young children. He is an avid cyclist and has performed in numerous triathlons and bike rides. He also enjoys camping, hiking, soccer, and traveling. And now, Care Messer. Care is a founder of the Cap Wellness Center, as well as the owner-founder of the Birth Education Center and San Diego Hypnobirthing. She became a doula under the instruction of Jerry Ryan through Donna and went on to become certified in hypnobirthing and has taught hypnobirthing since 2009. She is a certified hypnotherapist through NAF and a certified placenta encapsulationist. She trained with the ICEA to become certified as an international educator and trained with Kappa to be a postpartum doula. Care has taught natural birth training to student nurses at SDSU and holds a board position with the Njoni Institute of Midwifery and until recently has served as the vice president of the San Diego Birth Network. Care is the mother of two girls and two Pomeranians. So with that, Let's switch over and join the discussion with Dr. Cap and Care about VBAC. All right, Dr. Cap and Care, welcome back. Hi. Thank you. Well, today our podcast episode is going to be all about VBAC, which is vaginal birth after cesarean. And this is a topic that is very important to a lot of women when they're um, looking at their second, third, and fourth births, possibly, if they've had a cesarean before. And the reason why it's um, somewhat of a controversy or something that a lot of information needs to be uh, learned about is because the notion is, once you've had a cesarean, you always have to have a cesarean afterwards. And so I guess I'll start off with, like, where did that whole notion even come from? Yeah, to, you know, back in the 60s, uh, the C-section rate in the United States was probably in the single digits. Uh, what then occurred in the 70s uh, was probably the advent of the electronic fetal monitoring, which has added to our C-section rate and unfortunately hasn't necessarily decreased the original intent uh, for uh, cerebral palsy or to decrease the rate of cerebral palsy. Um, and unfortunately, it had the adverse effect of actually increasing our C-section rate so that in the 70s it doubled and then it continued to rise in the 80s uh, and, and, and 90s for that fact. Um, there was a thought that once you've made an incision on the uterus and delivered the baby um, abdominally, that that scar may not heal as well in order to allow 
uh, a vaginal birth. And that scar may open, which is called a uterine rupture, and that would, in turn, uh, that risk was too high. And so the old adage of once a C-section, always a C-section, which, you know, unfortunately, depending on where you are in the country, still is, is the mantra, um, has been debunked numerous times over in, in, in the medical literature. And, and um, in research, it's shown that it, it is a safe option for certain um, uh, moms to uh, attempt a vaginal birth after a C-section. So VBAC isn't necessarily a new trend. No, VBACs have been around for for quite some time. It, it originally was uh, something more of, of a risky procedure, but now we know that the risks are minimal. There are risks. Um, however, those risks... Um, being, uh, you know, let's say 1% for a uterine rupture or less than 1% for uterine rupture, um, if patients are properly counseled, they may choose to, to have a, a vaginal attempt as long as uh, there's no absolute contraindications. And what are some of the contraindications that might come up that uh, would prevent that? Uh, some of the absolute contraindications, uh, if that scar on the uterus was what's called a classical incision, where instead of being a, a horizontal or a vertical incision, it's an incision that's made up and down on the uterus, which uh, is a very rarely done um, uh, way to deliver a baby. Most of, uh, most of the incisions, again, are low vertical incisions. Um, but if you've had a a incision uh, that runs up and down on the uterus, not on the skin, then, then that's an absolute contraindication. If you have uh, placental abnormalities, a placenta previa, um, that would be a contraindication. Uh, but the contraindications are, are few and far between, and, and the benefits of having a vaginal birth after a C-section are, are monumental. And so if a woman's coming to you um, considering a, a VBAC and you're able to go through and rule out those contraindications, what are the recommendations that you make to the woman during her pregnancy to ensure that she's ready for that VBAC? So a after sitting down and, and talking extensively about the reasons, let's say, for having um, uh, say it was her first C-section, and really sitting down and delving into, in, in, into that history, um, I think one of the most important things is education. Uh, and, and that's really where the, the wellness center has um, increased my, my VBAC success rate, is through education. Once, once you really get to the core reason for that, for that first C-section, um, it's really about empowering moms, and that's where CARE and her birth education team, along with um, chiropractic care and acupuncture and massage and yoga, um, all come into play. Because you really have to, to understand the reason for that first C-section to understand how are you going to change the outcome uh, of the second pregnancy or third pregnancy uh, and make it something different than what the first C-section was. So it's really, it's going to be a 180 degree turnaround. Uh, and, and that takes time to develop. And that takes education. And that takes, um, again, all the ancillary team members um, that work together uh, to ensure that that mom is ready. And I never guarantee that we are going to have a successful vaginal birth, but what I do guarantee is a completely different situation from making the mom feel empowered, from trying not to ever give her any negative feelings or reasons not to feel that her body can do it. And once we break it down to um, the bare facts, we are very good at helping that mom have that successful vaginal birth. And that's really, again, where care and the rest of the team come into play. 
Right, well, and care, so that's how the whole VBAC 101 class came about. Is it? Is that right? Yeah, that's one of the one, beautiful things about working um, closely with the OBs is that when a mom first comes in and wants a VBAC, she, sometimes she just needs reassurance that it's possible, but she doesn't know where to start. And in the VBAC class, it's way more than a statistics class on what's safe, what's not, what your risk of this is for that. It's a processing class, and it's not only for mom, but it's for her partner or partners, however that um, works in their family. Um, and we talk to the partners, too, about what they experienced, because a lot of times when we're asking partners in class, how did you feel about this kind of birth um, with whatever situation that came about, the partners are saying anger. Um, frustration. I couldn't fix it. Nobody asked me anything. It was just done to her. I couldn't protect her. And they feel very, on the outsides, they feel very um, nervous about the next one because after whatever kind of labor they had or experience they had, bottom line is surgery is what they know. And they know that baby's out in 30 minutes or three minutes and it's done. And so see, even though that beast was a scary beast for them, it's all they know and they know it can be done very quickly and they don't understand why she wants to do that again. And we need to get both of them on board with whatever the birth is that they're looking towards this time so that they can go in as a team because that baby needs a team mentality um, so that baby can feel safe when they enter the world. And once a mom gets some education about maybe Last time, certain things she did or neglected to do may have led to that. It starts a healing process because you really have to let go of the last birth so that you can look forward to the new one and create something different. And it begins with education um, after you find the right care provider. So both of those working together can create a beautiful experience. And um, that's what we offer in that VBAC class because it gets them on board to start projecting beauty and peace this time and figure out what the worries are so we can get rid of them. And so an emotional sense and kind of like a past trauma sense, they're able to release that so they're not carrying that emotion into this next birth. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. And the worries and the fears that moms have, she's baking this new baby in that. She's filling this baby with worry and unsafety and um, the not knowing um, is not a good way to start this baby's life off. So sometimes they need some trauma work and we can get them um, with the right resources to go there and let that go. Sometimes it's therapy. Sometimes this time they need a birth class because last time they spaced it. Or they need a different birth class because it was an education that just didn't give them the preparation they needed. Um, and usually, and I would say always, add a doula because the doula can help get you over those emotional pieces um, and help get you through um, what you need to get through maybe at home before you even show up at your birthplace. Um, it's tweaking what we did last time and making it better for this time. Right, and Dr. Kepp, you had said too about you know getting rid of um, you know the problems or the barriers that might have caused the cesarean to take place in the in the first birth and. I know for me working with women preparing for VBACs with the, the chiropractic care I'm doing that physiologically there may be a lot of patterns stuck in the body um, that were making delivery or making labor not progress properly or there are difficulties that might have prompted that cesarean and so in a specifically in a, in a pelvic alignment sense we want to make sure that that pelvic bowl is aligned and symmetrical and flexible and big as possible for the second delivery to go um, smoothly but then also the work I'm doing uh, chiropractically is to normalize the nerve supply to the uterus so that uterus, the muscular organ, is fully capable of doing the work that it's being called upon on the second delivery rather than if there was some interference or some problem that the uterus wasn't able to do its job as efficiently, then uh, that might have been the reason why it prompted the cesarean. So. There's the phys physiological barriers we want to clear out from the first birth as well as the kind of emotional and headspace um, sense as well. 
What has been your experience, both, I'll ask both you and uh, Dr. Kapp and Care, uh, with women going into their VBAC that have had successful VBACs? So, like, what were the things that those women did that you'd want any woman going into um, preparing for a VBAC to do? Yeah, I think first and foremost, you really have to understand um, what exactly happened with your first and what paths or choices were made in that first uh, delivery um, to lead you to that cesarean, uh, which means when did, when did you get to the hospital? When did labor start? If you got an epidural, when did you get an epidural? How did you prepare before? Did you do a birth class? Did you do a birth class that was out of the hospital? And at some point, we'll have a conversation about birth classes and what it means to take one in the hospital and what it means to take one you know, out of the hospital. Did you, were you physically active? Were you feeling strong? Were you feeling powerful? Were you feeling supported from your husband or your partner? Uh, were you physically strong? Had you seen a chiropractor? Had you gotten that pelvis aligned? Um, unfortunately, it's interesting because you would think that the process of birth uh, would go very smoothly, but the problem with what's occurring now is is that, unfortunately, we as a society and we as physicians and midwives, we're interrupting that normal process. We're making patients feel that their bodies can't do it. We're doing epidurals too early and and uh, disrupting that process along the way or sometimes even hurrying it up meaning breaking the bag of water, meaning starting Pitocin, all these things that interfere with the normal physiology of birth affect that outcome. So understanding the process as a patient and as a practitioner is paramount to being able to have successful births. And I will tell you of the last you know, thousand births that we've done here in my practice, when we look at the numbers, statistically speaking, our VBAC success rate is almost at 80%. Part of those births are that I'm one of a handful of providers here in San Diego that is doing VBACs after two C-sections. So those numbers are included in there, and sometimes after two C-sections, uh, statistically speaking, it, it, it is a little bit more difficult to have those vaginal births. But even after two C-sections, 50% of the time, we're able to get a vaginal birth healthy and safely. I'm not saying a VBAC is for everybody, but it should be an option for, for patients that are, are good candidates and are willing to put in the time. Uh, I, I talk with care all the time. I'm willing to give my patients 110%, but they also have to put in the time on the front end. You can't expect that you had a C-section with your first and that all you're going to do is find me as a provider and then say, okay, I'm all set up. I've got Dr. Cap as a provider. Unfortunately, I'm not a miracle worker. And the team that I've assembled around me helped me uh, empower that patient so that their success rate goes substantially up. The patients that we have that are part of the wellness center and that are part of the practice have a much higher rate of VBAC success um, than uh, patients that are not necessarily taking the birth classes, are not getting doulas, are not putting the time in the front end. So my 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 number one advice is if if you know you choose to have uh, a, a trial of labor, if you will, after a C-section, you really have to put in the work on the front end because it does take. Uh, several different viewpoints, if you will, and different people to help uh, empower that patient to its fullest. And at the end of the day, I, I'm not sure how that birth is going to go, but that patient is going to feel empowered. That patient is going to feel like they have a voice. That patient is going to take back that birth, and they're going to walk out of that hospital, regardless of the outcome, feeling like a champion. And they're going to feel the power of birth because they know they've done everything that they possibly can to get the outcome that they would like. And even if the outcome isn't exactly what they like, they still feel amazing. And we need to do that more for more moms. We really need to take back birth and, and, and empower women to have the amazing births that they can. 
And Kara, what have you seen um, as a as, as with women having done throughout their pregnancy to be successful in their VBACs? Well, I see the ones that are the most successful are the ones that don't put it off until the very end. They start early, they research their providers, they start reading books, um, they get a doula, and they retweak their education. Um, if they didn't do education the first time, but they're just complaining about, I don't know, what do I do with my child? I need childcare, blah, blah, blah. Then they stop complaining, they figure out how to get childcare, and they get in the class. Um, a five or six weeks outside of hospital childbirth education can make all the difference in putting the tools in place for your confidence. Um, I also found that a lot of my moms chose induction or felt bullied into induction with their past care providers, which led them into a cesarean um, because they didn't know that their body wasn't ripe yet and they didn't know why they were saying yes at 40 weeks. They were tired of being pregnant too. And then once on the outside of that cesarean that it led to, they kicked themselves because they didn't know enough about the natural process of birth and what their body was supposed to be doing at the time their provider suggested or almost mandated them set a date for their birth. Um, and this time around, it has to be different. And the only way it's different is to get educated. Um, the right provider is super key. Um, the education, the class, and the sacrifice to get the right kind of care. This time they're taking more of an initiative in getting chiropractic and acupuncture and doing the exercise they need to. And now they've got a two-year-old that they're chasing around and it's really difficult to do that. But they find a way to incorporate either more childcare or go to a place that allows their child to come with them to get the kind of physical care that they need. Um, because it's so much more with a VBAC. They need the emotional support as well as the physical support as well as the partner support. Um, and taking that VBAC 101 class early in the game helps to shape that and gives you a path to follow um, for that pregnancy. So that baby inside has a different kind of birth experience. And how often is that VBAC 101 class taught here? We offer it every other month here at Cap Wellness, and the other month is offered at the Birth Education Center because we service moms from all over the county, um, especially with Dr. C. Dr. Kapitanakis and other providers. So we're offering it every other month right now. Um, as soon as you find out you're pregnant is when we want you in that class with your partner. And all of the information about those offerings, about dates and times and locations will be available in the show notes here for this podcast and also on our website at capwellnesscenter.com. Um, as well on our website and the YouTube channels, uh, we have a lot more information about VBAC. Um, so you can be more educated and more empowered. We obviously have a great team here that's ready to support you. Um, so definitely check out those resources. So with our uh, last final minutes here, Dr. Kapp, do you have any final thoughts for uh, women that are considering a VBAC? I would, I, I would tell every woman considering a VBAC that they have to really have a heart-to-heart -heart with themselves and sometimes with their partners to uh, take the time to figure out what exactly they would like for this, uh, you know, second or third birth, if you will, and and really just spend some time listening to yourself and your body uh, to decide if it's right for you. Uh, some people feel that that it's it might not be right for them, and we can have an amazing gentle cesarean, and we'll do a podcast on that and talk to moms who choose not to. I would tell moms that if they choose not to, that to have a, a trial of labor after a C-section, that that's okay too. You know, I know society puts a lot of pressure on moms to have that vaginal birth after a C-section, but it's okay. You really have to though, spend the time to figure out uh, what would you like and, 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 and if you feel like it was a traumatic birth and that you need to heal from it, you really have to do the work on the front end with, with the next birth so that we can ensure that it's an amazing thing. And that, and that starts with education, and that's really uh, the bottom line of every trial of labor after a C-section. It's really get, get educated, uh, get powerful, feel good about things, uh, leave every appointment feeling stronger than, than when you went in. Uh, don't take in the negativity. All positive uh, and strength. Fantastic. And care, any final thoughts? 
Well, this is going to embarrass Dr. Kapitanakis, but I really don't care. Um, <sighs> I want to compliment him on how he does empower my moms because I've been in his office in the back room working and every single room that he walks into, it's, Hey, what's up? Let me see that little baby and blah, blah, blah. And he's so happy and so positive and always leaves them such gifts um, of love and concern with every single appointment. His moms are not numbers to him and my moms are not numbers to me. And so that means a lot to me as an educator, knowing that I can hand them off to him and know it's going to be a beautiful experience, every appointment, every interaction is going to feel like family. Um, and that makes a huge difference to their birth. Um, so I have to plug that part just because that's what you find with him. Um, and the same with the birth experience. Um, you know, sometimes I get bashed for having Pollyanna eyes and always being so positive and, you know, bad things can really happen. And yeah, they can, but th if we look at it with a filter of there's a reason behind everything, and I'm going to take that in stride and use it as a lesson, it's not so negative and it's not so traumatic. And, um, you know, I'm lucky to work with a care provider that feels the same way, and I think that's why we have good outcomes. I think that's absolutely true. I think that the more people around you that's positive and expecting the best rather than... Um, always considering the worst uh, will provide that positive outcome that you're really looking for. So Dr. Cap Care, thank you so much for t uh, taking time today to talk about this. Women listening to this um, podcast, if you want more information, please reach out to us here at the Cap Wellness Center. Uh, we want to support you in your process and in your choices. And in any way that we can do that, we're happy to do so. So uh, again, I'm Dr. J, the host of healthy births, happy babies. We'll see you on the next podcast. And until then, be well. Thank you for joining us today. For more information about this episode and other natural childbirth and parenting topics, please visit us at capwellnesscenter.com or message us on our Facebook page with any questions you might have. We here at the Cap Wellness Center look forward to helping you and your family be as happy and healthy as you can be.